father his armor and turban and put on his father's sword. He then stood to address his followers, starting with the words and praise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala qad amana fi qatli wa qatlikum fi hadha al-yawm fa'alaykum bil-sabri wal-qital. Allah has destined that you and I shall be killed today. I therefore would urge you to be strong and resilient in fighting. Then Imam Hussein began preparing for war and mobilized his band for war. To be seven members, he made Zuhair ibn al the commander of the right flank, Habib ibn Mulahi, the commander of the left flank, and his household in the center. <coughs> Imam then gave the flag to his brother Al Abbas. The troops gathered in front of the tents where the women and children were housed. <laughs> Omar ibn Sa'd, the commander of the enemy's army, came with 30,000 troops. He made Amr ibn al Hajjaj, the commander of the right flank, and Shibn ibn al Joshan, the commander of the left flank. When Imam Hussein saw their gathering, which was like a torrent, he raised his hands to the skies and prayed. Allahumma anta thiqati fi kulli kar wa anta rajai fi kulli shidda wa anta li fi kulli amrin nazala bi thiqatun wa adda kam min hammin yadhafu fihi al-fuad wa taqallu fihi al-hila wa yakhdilu fihi al-sadiq wa yashmitu fihi al-adu anzaltahu bik وشكوته إليك رغبة مني إليك عمن سواك ففرجته عني وكشفته فأنت ولي كل نعمة وصاحب كل حسنة ومنتهى كل رغبة Oh my Lord, you are my haven in every mishap my hope in every predicament my refuge and defender in every ordeal how many a distress that weakens the hearts makes the enemy rejoice at the misfortune when I entrusted it into you and resorted to you out of preference over others. You did not let me down and had driven away and eliminated all these distressing things. You are the giver of every boon and the ultimate source of every wish to be granted. Then he mounted his horse and stood in front of them, ready to speak. He began by saying, O oh people, track back my lineage to see who I am. Then look back and think to yourselves. Think about whether it is right for you to kill me and violate my integrity. Am I not the son of your prophet's daughter? Am I not the son of your prophet's successor? Was not Hamza the master of martyrs my father's uncle? Was not Ja'far my uncle? Have you not heard of the Prophet's words concerning my brother and I? Hassan and Hussein are the masters of youth of paradise. Whether you believe in what I say or not, even though it is the truth, there are men amongst you that if you ask them, they will tell you that I speak the truth. Ask Jabir ibn Abdullah al-Ansari, ask Zayd ibn Alqam, ask Anas ibn Malik to tell you that they heard these words from the Messenger of Allah in the favor of my brother and I. Submit to the authority of your kinsmen, says Qais ibn al-Ash'ath. They have never treated you badly, Imam Hussein says, by God. I will never give my, my hand like a humiliated man, nor will I flee like a slave. La wallah la a'atikum bi yadi i'ta al dhalil, wa la uqarru uqrar al abid. Imam Hussein then raised his hands towards the skies and said, Allahumma habis anhum qada al sama, wa abath alayhum sineena ka sineena Yusuf. وصلت عليهم غلام ثقيف 
يسقيهم كأسا مصبرة لا يدع فيهم أحدا إلا قتلة قتلة بقتلة وضربة بضربة ينتقم لي ولأوليائي وأهل بيتي وأشجاعي منهم تبا لكم أيتها الجماعة وترحى حين استرخصتمونا والحين فأصرخناكم موجفين سللتم علينا سيفا لنا في إيمانكم وحششتم علينا نارا اقتدحناها على عدونا وعدوكم فأصبحتم إلينا لأعدائكم على أوليائكم بغير عدل أفشوه فيكم ولا أمل أصبح لكم إلا وإن الدعي ابن الدعي قد ركز بين اثنتين بين السلة والذلة وهيهات من الذلة يأبى الله ذلك لنا ورسوله والمؤمنين وحجور طابت واهطهرت وأنوف حمية ونفوس أبية من أن تؤثر من من أن نؤثر طاعة الآم على مصارع الكرام ألا وإني زاحف بهذه الأسرة مع قلة العدد وخذلة الناصر فإن نهزم الهازمون قدما وإن نغلب فغير مغلبين Oh Allah give them no rain afflict them with barren years like the years of Yusuf and make them slaves to the man from Thaqif, meaning Hajjaj ibn Yusuf al-Thaqafi, where they labeled us as liars and left us down. Oh, you are our Lord. We rely on you and you were out, and to you we return. He then began to plead for help and rescue. When Al-Qur ibn Yazid al he heard his plea for help, he went to Umar ibn Sa'd and asked him, Are you really going to fight this man? Umar replied, Yes, by the Almighty. The kind of fighting in which heads will fall off and arms will be cut off. al Hus said, Are you not satisfied with what he has proposed to you? Umar replied, If it was, it, if it was up to me, I would accept his proposal. But your master Ibn Ziyad has his orders. al then stood in the middle of the battlefield and began to tremble. Al-Muhajir ibn Aus called him and said, You arise my doubt. I have never seen you like this in any situation. And if someone asked me about the most courageous man in Kufa, I would have never chosen anyone other than you. Al Hus said, I am making a decision between paradise and hellfire, and by Allah, I choose nothing over paradise, even if it means death. He then gradually started drawing near towards the camp of Imam Hussein and was saying, Allahumma alayka anib, fatub alay, faqad arabta kuloob awliya'ik wa awlaad bint nabiyik. As soon as he reached the Imam, the Imam asked him who he was. <coughs> al Hur, appearing with tears in his eyes, said, My master, I am the one who brought you to this and prevented you from returning from where you came. Imam said, Are you Hur? Hur replied, Yes, my master. He says, Do you think Allah will accept my repentance? Imam said, if you repent, Allah will forgive. Umar ibn Sa'd drew nearer the, to the camp of Imam Hussein and ordered the bearer of the flag to move forward. He then took an arrow, placed it in his arch and released it in the direction of the Imam's camp and said, bear witness for me with the Emir that I was the first to shoot. The arrows then followed like rain, causing injuries amongst the companions of Imam Hussein. Imam Hussein then said, Qumu rahimakum Allah ila al-maut, alladhi la budda minhu fa inna hadhi al-sahab rusul al-qawm ilaykum. My companions rise to certain death. May Allah have mercy on you. The arrows are the messengers of your enemies to you.
the companions waged the battle and fought for an hour or so. When the dust settled, there was fifty dead. When the Imam saw the sight, he said, Allah's wrath on the Jews was great because they claimed he had a son. The Christians because they made him one of the tr Trinity and the people who were anonymous in the agreement to kill the son of the Prophet's daughter. By Allah, I am not giving to give up until I meet Allah drenched in my blood. He then shouted, Allah al minna salim yam suruna, Allah al mu'in and yu'inuna, Allah al mud mudib and yudibu an haram ala rasulillah. Is there no one who can come to our rescue? Is there no one to protect the sanctity of the Prophet's family? When the woman heard his plea, they began to cry. One by one, the companions of Imam Hussein asked for permission to enter the battlefield to fight the enemy, bidding him farewell. al Hur ibn Yazid al-Riyahi attacked the enemy troops, killing over 40 of them. When his horse got wounded, he fought them on foot until he fell to the ground. Imam Hussein rushed to him, removed his blood and sand from his face. Congratulations, O oh, Hur. Oh. Imam Hussein told him, You are a free man, just like your mother named you. Aslam, the servant of Imam Hussein, was next. He fought very bravely. When he was badly wounded, he called on the Imam for help. Imam came to him and hugged him for the last time. Aslam smiled, thanked Allah for granting him martyrdom, and passed away. Muslim ibn Awsaja assaulted the enemy and fought bravely. <laughs> Ammar ibn al-Hajjaj along with his troops counter-attacked counter the camp of Imam Hussein. When the two forces clashed and the dust settled, Muslim ibn Awsaja was found fallen but still alive. Imam Hussein and Habib ibn Mulah rushed to him. Imam said to him, may Allah have mercy on you Muslim. Habib said, I am very sorry to see you in this state. You are entering paradise, O oh Muslim. If I wasn't absolutely sure that I will follow your footsteps, I would have asked you to give me your last will. Muslim said, yes, my will is to take care of this man, pointing at Imam Hussein. Sacrifice your last breaths you have for him. Habib told him, rest assured that I will. Among those who remained alive at the stage was Wahab al-Kalbi. Wahab was a Christian who was accompanied by his newly married wife and mother. All of them declared their Islam before Imam Hussein alayhi salam on the way to Karbala. His mother urged him to do his best in the battlefield. His wife did not want him to go. They were newlyweds. Nevertheless, he entered the battlefield, killing some and wounding others. He returned to his mother and said, Mother, are you satisfied with me? She said, I'll never be satisfied until you are killed for the cause of Imam Hussein. His wife said, for God's sake, we have just got married. God married, I cannot stand even the thought of your death. His mother interrupted by saying, don't listen to her. Go back and fight for Imam Hussein. 
You will earn his grandfather's intercession on the day of judgment. He got back fighting. He killed 19 of them and another 20 of the infantry. Then his fingers were cut. At that moment, his wife carried a pole and rushed towards him, saying, فداك أبي وأمي قاتل دون الطيبين حرم رسول الله My father and my mother be your sacrifice Fight for the sake of this household of رسول الله Do not return alive to me What have said some time ago you were objecting and now you are urging me to fight What happened? His wife says, Ya Wahab, La talumni, Inna wa'iyat al-Husayn Qatta'at liyat al-Qalbi Ya Wahab, Ra'aytuhu janasan Bibab al-Khaymah Wa huwa yunadi Wa qillat nasara Don't blame me, Wahab, I have forsaken life Since I heard the Bab Hussein Calling, oh my God Oh, how we are left alone. Is there anyone to support us? His voice really wounded my heart. Wahab kept fighting till he lost both his arms and was killed. His wife walked towards his body and sat near towards his head, wiping his, away the blood and saying, Congratulations, for you are guaranteed a place of heaven. I pray to Allah Almighty to bestow it upon me, to make me join you. Shemroz was around, dispatched a servant to kill her. He dealt a fatal blow to her head, and she died immediately. <laughs> After praying the noon prayers, Jog, the servant of Abu Dhar, approached Imam Hussein, asking him for permission to fight. Imam Hussein told him he does not need to fight and that he can leave the battle. John began to cry. He told the Imam, at times of comfort I was with you. By the times of hardship you want me to abandon you. Never I will fight with you until my blood mixes with your blood, O Hussein. John entered and fought bravely until he fell and called for the Imam. Imam Hussein wept over him and then put his cheeks on the cheeks of Joan, a gesture of love and honor. Once all the companions had passed away, the family of Imam Hussein got ready for the battle. The first to come forward was Ali al-Akbar, Imam Hussein's oldest son. He was 27 years old. When Ali asked for permission from his father, Imam Hussein could not hold back his tears. He looked to Umar ibn Sa'd and said, ثم رفع شيبته المقدسة نحو السماء وقال اللهم اشهدها اشهد على هؤلاء القوم فقد برز إليهم أشبه الناس برسولك محمد خلقا وخلقا ومنطقا وكنا اشتقنا إلى رؤية نبيك نظرنا إليه اللهم فمنعهم بركات الأرض وفرقهم تفريقا ومزقهم تمزيقا واجعلهم طرائق قددا ولا ترض الولاة عنهم أبدا فإنهم زعونا لينصرونا ثم عدوا علينا يقاتلونا ثم تلاقوه تعالى إن الله اصطفى آدم ونوحا وآل إبراهيم وآل عمران على العالمين ذرية بعضها من بعض والله سميع عليم Oh Omar, may Allah bereave you of your family the same way you bereave me of mine May Allah someone send May Allah send someone to kill you on your bed. Then he looked to the sky and said, Oh Allah, bear witness on these people. 
the most similar youth to the Prophet has come out to meet them. O oh Lord, deprive them from the riches of this land. Divide them and bring your wrath upon them. <coughs> Ali al-Akbar entered the battle, killing tens from the troops and reciting the epic. And Ali ibn al-Husayn ibn Ali. نحن وبيت الله أولى بالنبي الله لا يحكم في نبل الدعي أضرب بالسيف وحامي عن أبي ضرب غلا من هاشبي علوي due to the immense thirst he felt the pain from the scorching sun he came back to his camp asking his father for water. Imam Hussein told him that he is thirstier than his son and assured him that Rasulullah will be the first to quench his thirst. Ali went back fighting with greater fears. It was as if his grandfather Ali ibn Abi Talib was in the battlefield. Finally, Murra ibn Munqid approached him and dealt a blow to Ali's head causing him to fall from his horse. His horse not being able to see the blood covering his eyes, dragged Ali to the enemy camp. The enemy, the, the enemy troops cut his limbs into pieces. Ali al-Akbar lastly cried out loud, Alayka minni salam ya Aba Abdullah. Hada jaddi fad saqani bikasin. شربت لا أضرأ بعدها وأن لك كأس المذخورة فالعجل العجل أو أبا عبد الله farewell here is my grandfather from whose cup I have drunk never again I will be thirsty he says that will there will be a be a cup waiting for you يا أبا عبد الله Imam Hussein rushed to him, saying what is remaining of his son Ali. Imam Hussein put his cheeks on the cheeks of Ali and said, Ala dunya ba'dak al-afah, ma ajra'ahum ala al-Rahman, wa ala intihak hurmat al-Rasul, ya'izzu ala jaddika wa abika al-tad'uhum fala yujibuk. وَتَسْتَغِيثُ بِهِمْ فَلَا يُغِيثُوكَ Life is not worth living after you, my son Ali. How dare they enroach on Allah and violate the sanctity of the Prophet. Alas, it is hard on your grandfather and your father that you call on them for help, which they cannot provide. He then scooped a handful of his pure blood and threw it towards the sky. Not a single drop fell to the ground. Imam Hussein ordered the youth to carry him. Come carry Ali back to the camp. The women gathered around Ali weeping and crying and beating their chest. Now it was the turn of a 14-year-old Qasim, the son of Imam Hassan alayhi salam. First Imam Hussein refused to give him permission since Nasim was the only memory remaining from his brother Al Hassan alayhi salam. Nasim brought a letter to Imam Hussein which was from his father Imam Al Hassan, urging him and to allow him to, to allow his son to fight. Imam hugged Al Qasim and wept emotionally and then allowed him to go into the into the battle. Qasim fought bravely and saying, إِن تَنْكُرُونِي فَأَنَا نَجْلُ الْحَسَنِ سِطُّ النَّبِيِّ الْمُصْطَفَى وَالْمُؤْتَمَنِ هَذَا الْحُسَيْنُ كَالْأَسِيرِ الْمُرْتَهَنِ بَيْنَ أُنَاسٍ لَا سُقُوهٍ صَوْبَ الْمُزُنِ Until his sandal slab snapped and he bent down to fix it. Umar ibn Sa'd al-Sa'di hits him with his sword on his head. Imam Hussein rushed to him, crying over his body, saying in the sad voice, Bu'dan liqawmin qataluk Khasmuhum yawm al-qiyamati jadduk wa abuk ثم قال عز والله على عمك أن تدعوه فلا يجيبك أو يجيبك فلا ينفعك صوت والله كثروات رهوة 
It is with great regret that I am helpless. You call, but I cannot respond. Or when I respond, but I cannot help. Qasim was brought back to the tents. They put his body next to the body of Ali al-Akbar and the youth. Allah, Imam Hussein then says, Allahumma ahsahum adada, wa la tughadir minhum ahada, wa la taghfir lahum ada, abada, sabran ya bani umumati, sabran ya ahl bayti, la raitum hawlan ba'd hadha al-yawm. Oh Lord, do not lose count of them and do not forgive them. O oh cousins, for year in adversity, you shall never see disgrace after today. When Abbas saw the death tolls rising, he stood and ordered his brothers, Abdullah, Uthman, and Ja'far to enter the battlefield and fight one by one. One by one, his brothers fought and were killed. It was now time for Abbas himself to enter the battlefield. He came to his brother, Imam Hussein, seeking permission to go fight. Imam Hussein did not want to lose Abbas. Tears filled the eyes of Imam Hussein. Oh brother, Imam Hussein said, You are the bearer of my flag. If you die, my entire army will collapse. My enemies will rejoice. Abbas replied, I am tired of these hypocrites. I cannot stand the sounds of the children crying out for thirst. There are sounds of thirst. Al-Atash, Al-Atash is killing me. I want to seek my revenge. When Imam Hussein saw the ad Abbas's adamant about fighting, he said, my brother, go and seek some water for these children. Abbas immediately mounted his horse, took the skin water container and headed towards the river, cutting through the enemy lines. He was surrounded by some 4,000 troops who shot at him with their arrows, but he did not fear the multitude. The standard hoisted over his head. He started attacking them, causing them to flee in front of him and he managed to reach the water line of the river with fortitude. As soon as he reached the river, he grabbed a handful of water to drink, but then remember the thirst of his brother Hussein. He dropped the water immediately. He couldn't drink while Imam Hussein and the children were still thirsty. Ya nafsu min ba'd al وَبَعْدُهُ لَا كُنْتِ أَوْ تَكُونِ هَذَا حُسَيْنٌ شَارِبُ الْمَنُونِ وَتَشْرَبِينَ بَارِدِ الْمَعِينِ وَاللَّهِ مَا هَذَا فِعَالُ دِينِ وَلَا فِعَالُ صَادِقِ الْيَقِينِ He filled his water skin, mounted his horse again, and headed towards his camp. All of a sudden, the enemy troops surrounded him from every direction. They attacked him all together. Zayd ibn al-Wattad and Hakim ibn al-Tufayl. They set up a trap and they waited him as soon as he approached them. They attacked him behind a tree, waiting for Abbas to approach. Zayd hit Abbas on his right arm, immediately cutting off. Abbas began to recite, Wallahi in qata'atum o yameeni, inni uhami abadan an deeni, wa an imam in sadiq in yaqini, نجل النبي الطاهر الأمين. He grabbed the container in his left arm until Hakim came out and hit his left arm as well. Abbas said, "Ya nafsu la tafshi min al kufari, wa abshiri bi rahmat al jabari. Bibaghihim qad qadau yisari." فأصلهم يا رب حن والنار. He managed to grab the water skin with his teeth. Staying without his two arms, he headed towards the camp. But the enemy did not give him a chance. 
They raped him with arrows, one falling in his eyes, and one hitting the water skin, causing it to drop, and another arrow pierced through his chest. Abbas was hopeless. When the container fell, Abbas lost all his hope and stopped going towards the camp of Imam Hussein. Instead, he stood in his spot. All of a sudden, one of the wicked troops hit him with a pole on his head, causing Abbas to fall off to the ground, calling Imam Hussein for help. Assalamu alaykum ya Aba Abdullah. My brother Abba Abdullah, may the peace of Allah be with you. I have fallen to the ground. Imam Hussein rushes towards him like a hawk, causing the enemy troops to flee. When Imam Hussein approached him, he first saw the water skin, then he saw the flag grounded. Then he saw the two arms of Abbas scattered on the battlefield. Abbas was lying on the ground, an arrow embedded in his eyes, and an arrow in his chest. Imam Hussein could not control him. He cried immensely, saying, Akhi Alan, Abbas, you have broken my back. Abbas, my enemy, will rejoice over your death. Abbas, there is no one to support me any longer. Abbas, who will safeguard the daughters of Rasulullah after you. Imam Hussain orders Abbas to get up that they may take him back to the camp. Abbas refused. He had promised the children to get them water. He could not go back empty handed. After a few moments, Imam Hussein was seen walking back to the camp alone, downhearted, sorrowful, hopeless, and weeping, wiping his tears with his shirt sleeves. Imam Hussein returned to his camp. Sukaida approached him and asked him about her uncle. He told her he had been killed. Zainab overheard and screamed, Oh, our Abbas, what a loss. The woman started crying and Hussein joined them and saying, Wa akha, wa abbasa, wa layatana ba'dak. After the death of Abbas, Imam Hussein was left without supporters. He looked around and saw nothing but dead bodies around him. He kept on shouting, Hal min bin yadhibu an harab Rasulullah? Hal min muahidin yakhafu Allah fina? Hal min mughithin yarju Allah igathatina? Hal min dhaab bin yadhibu an harab Rasulullah? Is there no one to help us? Is there no one to protect us? Before Imam Hussein said his last farewell, his sister Zainab brought him his infant Abdullah. Zainab told him, my brother, before you go, please ask these men for a few drops of water for this child. This child is dying out of thirst. He can no longer breathe. Imam Hussein grabbed his son and headed towards the enemies and asked them for a few drops of water. The enemy huddled around each other to decide whether to give him water or not. All of a sudden, Harmala shot the infant with an arrow, which pierced through the child's neck, killing him instantly. Imam Hussein scooped the blood that was dripping from Abdullah's neck and threw it to the sky and said, Hawan alayya ma nuzzil bi, innahu ba'ayn Allah. Allahumma la yakunan ibni hadha ahwan alayka min fasid salih. Imam al-Baqir says, 
Then of the drops came back to the ground. The man of Hussein came back and honed it over the child to his daughter Sufayna. Other narrations say that Imam Hussein buried the infant right away. At this time, Imam Hussein looked hopeless to live, downhearted and sorrowful, and determined to meet his Lord with, and will be facing martyrdom. He came back to his family, bidding them farewell for the last time. Ya Zainab, Ya Umm Kulthum, Ya Sukayna, Ya Ruqayya, Ya Rabab, Alaykum Minni Salam, Al Wada, Al Wada. Fahada Akhra Ustaba, Wa Qad Qarba Minkum Al Iftija, Istaghdu Lil Bala. واعلموا ان الله حافظكم وحاميكم وسينجيكم من شر الاعداء الوداع الوداع او زينب او ام كلثوم او رقيه او سكينه او رباب Peace be with you, I am going away and one shall meet in paradise be patient after my death for you have many tragedies awaiting you. Then he asked for his horse. Zainab alayhi salam brings him his horse, tears filling her eyes. When Imam Hussein mounted his horse and, to, and, and headed towards the battlefield, he heard a voice faint calling him from behind. He looked back to see what it was. It was his sister Zainab asking him to come down from his horse. She told him, there is one thing that I need to do, oh my brother Hussein, come down from your horse. She embraced him and printed a kiss on his neck and his chest, and looked towards Medina and said, my brother, I have done as have you told me. Imam Hussein rode, toward, rode his horse one last time and charged to the enemies by reciting, and Al Hussein ibn Ali, آليت الله الثني أحمي عيال تابي أمضي على دين النبي. Thereupon Umar ibn Sa'd yelled at the crowd, "Mind him, he is the son of the exterminator of the Arabs. هذا من قتال العرب. Sent him on from every direction. They rent him. They rain him with four thousand arrows." The soldiers cut, off, cut, cut him off his cap. He shouted, وَيْحَكُمْ يَا شِيْعَةَ عَلَىٰ أَبِي سُحْيَانِ إِنْ لَمْ يَكُنْ لَكُمْ دِينِ وَكُنْتُمْ لَا تَخَافُونَ الْمَعَالِ فَكُونُوا أَحْرَارًا فِي دُنْيَاكُمْ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ عَرَبًا كَمَا تَزْعَمُونَ Shemrak said, Slaim, what are you saying, O oh, the son of Fatima? I am the one who is fighting you. The women, he, Imam Hussein, the women are not at fault. So as long as I am alive, forbid your insolent thoughts from harassing my family. Shemrak accepted his request. Whereupon the enemy soldiers darkened him, a fierce fighting rage. Since he was very thirsty, he attacked the flag next to the water. They sealed the river away from him. He managed to destroy them and make his way to the river. Once he was in the river, he extended his hand to drink. A man called upon him. Do you enjoy drinking water while the integrity of your family is being violated? He let the water spill from his hand. Without drinking, he returned to the tents and charged to the enemies once again. When Umar ibn Sa'd saw him approaching, he ordered his soldiers to attack him from every direction. One by one, they met the Imam, and the Imam fought them. After killing tens of them, he became severely wounded. The Imam became severely tired. He asked the enemies for some water. Shimon answered, you're not going to taste water until you enter Jahannam. Imam Hussein had stopped for us. He was resting. One of the enemies hit him with a stone on his forehead, causing blood to 
stretched out from their mouth's face. Their mouth took out a piece of cloth to wipe the blood off his face. Suddenly, another enemy pointed the three-headed poison arrow at the imam. Ahmed shot the chest of the imam. The imam began to recite Bismillah, wa billah, wa ala millat Rasulillah. He put his hand under his chest, filling it with, with blood. Then he threw the blood towards the skies and said, My only comfort is that what has been befallen me is in the eyes of Allah. He filled his hands again with the blood. And this time staining his hair and beard, he said, I wish to meet Allah and my grandfather dressed with my blood. Imam Hussein fatally wounded. He was left laying on the ground for a considerable time. No one, none of the soldiers had the boldness to come finish him. The Imams were started roaming around him, staining his forehead with the Imams' blood. The horse kept on circling around the Imam as if it's telling him to get up because the enemy was approaching. Imam al-Baqir was quoted saying, the horse was saying, what an injustice has been done to the grandson of the Prophet by his own nation. Then the horse headed towards the camp of Imam Hussein. The woman heard the voice of the herd of the horse, thinking that Imam Hussein had come back to them. However, they came out of their tents to see the horse was without his knight. Drenched in the blood of his master, they began to beat their chest, shouting, O oh, Hussein, O oh, Hussein. Zainab immediately rushed to the scene to see what is happening to her brother. She saw the Imam laying on the ground, surrounded by the enemy. Zainab shouted, O oh, Omar, have you no mercy to see my white brother in the state? Omar ibn Sa'd with his Tears streaming down his face, shouting to his shoulders, Go down to him and bring him to peace, meaning one of you must kill him. At the sound of this command, Shumar ibn al Joshan began to approach the Imam. Our master, Imam al Mahdi, salutes his grandfather, saying, and he describes the last moment of Imam Hussein. He says, Ya Janda. فَهَوَيْتُ إِلَى الْأَرْضِ جَرِيحًا تَضَعَ كَالْخُيُولُ بِحَوَافِرِهَا وَتَعْلُوكُ الْقُمَاتُ بِفَوَاتِرَهَا قَدْ رَشَّحَ لِلْمَوْتِ جَبِينُكْ وَاخْتَلَفَتْ بِالْإِنْتِبَاضِ إِنْفِصَاطُ شَمَائِلُكْ وَالْإِنْفِصَاطُ شِمَالُكَ وَيَمِينُكْ تَدِيرُ طَرْفًا خَفِيًّا إِلَى رُحْلِكَ وَبَيْتِكْ وَقَدْ شَرُّتَ بِنَفْسِكْ عَنْ وَلْدِكْ وَأَهَالِيكْ He came near the Imam of Mu'mineen He kicked the Imam in his chest and sat on the chest of the Imam He then hit the 